Jean Kitson, welcome to Booktopia. Thank you, Caroline. How much did you know about the menopause before it hit you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I knew it was change of life because I'd heard my mother talk about change of life, but that's it. Oh, it's a change of life. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything. No, none of my friends had ever mentioned it. Um, no one I knew had ever mentioned it. I, rem I don't remember anyone talking to me about it. So, yeah, so, nothing. What's the most important thing that you think that you've learnt now that you've written this book? Oh, there are so many important things, I have to say. It, that's why there's, there's so many facts in there that I didn't know. There's things about, well, where to start? The most important thing is that it's a beginning as well as an end. It's like puberty. It's part of the natural cycle of life. It is normal and it is manageable. Mm. And we can talk about it cheerfully and openly. We can talk, and men want to talk about it. The men in our lives want to know what's going on. It leads to a greater understanding of each other and ourselves. Our kids want to know what's going on. Um, so I guess, I guess that was the most important thing, that every woman goes through it. We are the only species, apart from a few upper primates, that go through menopause. Wow. Only species. Yes, apparently, because it's all about survival, apparently the latest theory is that Mother Nature has decided that women at that age, to, for the survival of the species, we needed to stop having children and start looking after the grandchildren so that the mothers could go out gathering. Because, uh, you know, contrary to what we think of, the men hunting and getting the food, the, it was a gathering that supported the, um, the community. Mm. Yes, it was the gatherers who provided the mainstay of the food. So, they, so that's the latest theory, that we go through menopause so we can look after the grandchildren. Mother Nature is a bit old-fashioned, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess the thing that for me um, is the first thing that I think of when anyone says the term menopause is HRT. And HRT is such a minefield for most women and, and you feel like suddenly you have to do all this research and there's a lot of trial and error involved in that. So what did you learn about HRT and are you pro? I'm pro HRT most definitely. Now I've done all the research and gathered the evidence, the up to the moment accepted facts about HRT. When I first got menopause, I was getting hot flushes and I didn't really know what to do about it. And I'd heard about HRT, I'd heard about the link with breast cancer. I'm not a great one for, I don't take vitamins much. I don't take, I, I put off taking medicine. I'm just, well, I'm a bit of a hippie. And I didn't know where all the patches went. You know, did they go into landfill? What the, where did that estrogen go? You know, so, you know, did, it, where, did they end up in our wetlands and give us pelicans, you know? With boobs. Yeah, with boobs. Cows that wanted a bit of a cry in the top paddock once a month. So I wasn't sure about the whole thing and so had definitely heard about the link with breast cancer and was worried about it. So then when I started getting these hot flushes that were unmanageable, sweating on stage, it was impacting my work. Most women are still at work nowadays. We're at work, we have to manage our symptoms. I started looking into the facts and finding out. The reason HRT got a bad name was from the Women's Health Initiative study that uh, of about 2005, I think it was. Mm. I, it's all in my book. There's a lot of facts in there. And that decided, that linked it with breast cancer. Then since then, we've had a new study, world study, that has re-looked at the evidence from that study and determined that it was flawed because they used age groups of women. So they had women into their 70s taking HRT. And what they determined, and this is now accepted, um, accepted as the best knowledge around, um, benchmark knowledge is that uh, HRT has more health benefits than health risks if you take it in the first say six years of your menopause. Yeah. It's good for your bones, it's good for your bowels, it's good for your heart. I know women who take it because they feel more um, capable mentally, less mm. distracted. Mm. It stops the hot flushes. 
it, it's your libido too, you know. Absolutely, which is a huge section of the book. I, I love the fact that you've called the section of the book about libido the resealed section, which is just hilarious. And, and that's one of the things that is so great about the book is that you bring your signature humour to this subject. And one of the ways that you do that is by changing the terminology. So, in fact, you've invented, I think, a great expression for um, hot flushes. What do you call them? Oh, well, I didn't invent that, but that's power surges, yes. That's been around for a while. I would right. love to claim that as my <laughs> own, but it's not my own. No, power surges are a fantastic expression. But you, you coming up with the resealed section to talk about sex, that's that right. is yours. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And one of the great things that you say in that chapter is that it's not that um, women go off sex, it's that li the, their libido leaves them. Yes, yes. That's such does. an interesting way of looking at That's it. That's right. Not that we lose our libido. Oh my gosh, where did I put my libido? As if, you know, but it does leave them. And for some women, it's not a problem. And they don't mind one way or another. In some relationships, it just is a natural progression and everyone's comfortable and no one worries. For other women, it's a great sense of loss. And for their relationship, for men, they can wonder, what's going on? Is it me? You know, I, I haven't come across a single male who's, who's thought, oh, you know, she's just a cold fish or anything like that. They've thought, they've been worried that it was them. Mm. And that's what your partners feel, not, you know, oh, you know, she's just frigid now or whatever unpleasant term people use. They worry it's them. And because they don't know about menopause, and often women don't know about menopause, they don't know it's their hormones causing this loss of libido, the loss of, or maybe making sex painful, all these other symptoms that go with it, your sex drive. So I talked to a woman, the, the book is, you know, is full of stories, which is a great way to get information across other yeah. people's stories and they're very very funny most of them and sometimes really poignant but I talked to a woman who said um, she's 70 now and she's still on HRT she's been on it for about 15 years but she says she gets checked she has no uh, history of breast cancer mm. or any cancer in her family so she keeps getting checked regularly so I guess if you've got very good supervision I'm not suggesting you do that because they say you know shorter term shorter length of time as possible but she really likes having a sex drive she hasn't got a partner she says I'm driving nowhere but I really like the way it makes me feel I like having a sex drive and my libido is my libido it's how I like to feel and even the title of my book, You're Still Hot to Me, isn't about trying to be attractive to men. It's feeling attractive yourself Absolutely. and feeling good about yourself. And not even, you know, it's not even sexually attractive. It's just self-esteem. It's about self-esteem, mm. which can go right out the window with That's your right, hormones. because there are issues around depression that, that come up against you when you're sort of facing this. So it's a whole catastrophe. It can be a kind of a perfect storm of physical but also psychological symptoms. And some people seem to have more the physical and some people ha seem to have more the psychological. Of all the symptoms that you gathered, and obviously you've been talking to lots and lots of women, and as you say, you've collected these fantastic stories, What's the weirdest symptom that anybody told you was their kind of experience of menopause? Um, well, the first one that comes to my mind is formication, which is not sex with bureaucrats. <laughs> it's actually the sensation of ants crawling on your skin. And this woman had been to psychiatrists, dermatologists, everyone, and trying to get this, to try to work out what it was. And then it turned out to be hormonal. And apparently you've got oestrogen, your oestrogen affects your whole body and, and your eyes. So you can get dry eyes mm. because you've got oestrogen receptors in your eyes and all over your body. It's, it can affect, affect everywhere. So I guess, and then another woman, she got, um, she thought she had dementia. So she thought she had early onset dementia. And so did her husband, who's a medical person. And she was she would do things like be driving and not know where she was, drive around in circles, fall asleep, start not able to recognise her family. And they decided that they, that she didn't want to live in, in, in she didn't want to go on living. And they sourced Nembutal. 
This is a true story. This is the drug that you that use in euthanasia. euthanasia. They decided that if it went on and she got worse and worse, that she would. She didn't want to. That she had no quality of life. She couldn't work. She didn't recognise her loved ones. She didn't see any point. And so, and then someone suggested, why don't you try some HRT? Within days, I'm not saying that's the answer to Alzheimer's, but her symptoms were that. Symptoms, there are so many symptoms. Sometimes it's just getting a hairy chin, you know, and I having love. tweezers everywhere. I love the fact that you mentioned that. <laughs> and the magnifying <laughs> mirror in the bathroom. And well, the other sort of essential um, um, accessory in your book. So there's the tweezers, fine, yes. but you are also a strong advocate of sex aids and going shopping with your partner and you are hilarious about the sex aid <laughs> shopping. So um, do you want to say so something about that? You better be that? careful, Caroline, because remember in that, in that chapter I said it wasn't necessarily personal experience. No, I know. <laughs> I didn't still. want to have a... Real, <laughs> but there is things about sex aids, of course, and that's how sex aids began you know for women with menopause but they called it climacteric they called it hysteria remember that film that came out called yes, hysteria yes. where the the invention of the vibrator was for women who were anxious and getting set up during menopause that's, right. that's how they invented the vibrator and we've come a long way since then but how much of all of this is cultural gene what about other cultures what about what do we know about the menopause in Asian society or in African society? Well, I often read that uh, it was a Western woman thing, menopause, and people would sort of roll their eyes and say that we sort of indulged Kind of a first women. world problem. It was a first world problem because we had time and, and that is wrong. Every woman goes through menopause. We are lucky enough to reach an age where we do our age is, you know, we, we survive we long enough, enough yeah. to go through menopause. The, what can be, so every woman everywhere goes through menopause. It, you know, in African countries, are they going to complain about menopause when they're fighting to survive? And they don't even have gynecologists mm. in most mm. of those countries. Mm. In Middle Eastern countries, it's very hard to get female gynecologists. I mean, you're not, you, we don't have the sort of relationship with our bodies, open relationships where we can discuss those things. It, it, you know, so we have to do it. We Western women have to speak out about what we go through. We have, the Dalai Lama said Western women were going to be, were the ones who would change the world. But I think he should have said menopausal Western women, actually. We're the ones that will um, make it easier, pave the way mm. for women. It's a woman's right to be able to speak about menopause and to get the treatment she needs. Culturally, Japanese women have diff different symptoms. And they think that uh, for one reason is they have a lower, they don't have as high uh, estrogen levels as we do in the first place, so they don't get the massive fluctuations that we get. Mm -hmm. Their symptoms don't, uh, they don't really get hot flushes. They get aches and pains, shoulder pains, muscular pains, things like that. I have to say, Jean, I don't think anybody else would be able to talk about menopause and include the Dalai Lama in the conversation the way that you did just now. Thank you very much, Jean Kitson. I hope Kitson. he doesn't mind. <laughs> I'm sure he won't. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.